Hey folks, thanks for coming back to the channel. Um, this is video number two in the three-part auto power race roll bar installation in my 1968 Mustang Fastback, complete with uh, interior panels and a Shelby rear package tray. As you can see, I've got the, uh, the cage in and the Shelby package tray mocked up and we're getting ready to do the final fit on the rear uh, interior quarter panels. Also got the floor all painted. Um, just gloss black rust-oleum. The floor pans were in pretty nice shape, so I just wanted to put a coat of paint on them. A um, couple areas where they were kind of worn through. Anyway, um, this is not where we're going to get in this video. Um, in the last video, you saw that we basically just got the, uh, the roll bar into the car. Uh, in this video, we're going to get the roll bar all mounted up and installed um, and then we're going to pull it back out again because that's the nature of the beast when you're doing something like this and uh, video number three is going to be fitting those interior quarter panels um, anyway thanks so much for coming back to the channel and check out the video like it. okay so your chances of one of these going into the car and just sitting perfectly flat and level um, on the mounting surfaces is like nil. No. These are 50 year old cars. Um, this car's had floors done poorly. Um, they twist, you know, they're abused. It's just, it's not gonna happen. So, it, and, and auto power doesn't send you any instructions either. But it's kind of obvious where the roll bar is supposed to go. Um, if I put it any further rearward, it would be into the curvature of the torque box. Um, if I put it any further rearward, it would be fouling the interior panels more. If I put it any further forward, it would be into the floor drain. So I just kind of, you know, pick a series of compromises that I'm willing to live with. And when I have it where I think that I want it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a transfer punch and I'm going to mark I'm going to go ahead and mark all of my holes, I guess. One. Not that one. I can do that one with a pen later. I noticed that as I hit them I was only going to mark the outer corner and drill it and throw a bolt in it and then go around and mark the rest, but I noticed as I, as I hit it, the bar did not move at all, so I went ahead and I got the next one that I could get to. I'm going to worry about the rear supports um, after I get the front completely drilled. So let me come around and do the other side, and then we'll start, uh, pull the bar forward, we'll start drilling some holes. Alright, so before you start drilling, always check underneath the car to make sure you don't have any brake lines, fuel lines, battery cables, so on and so forth running uh, in the path of your drill. Here we go. drilling stages to my final hole size. Which is three eighths of an inch by the way. And just always make sure you <laughs> still have the right size drill bit. Proper are 20, 2764ths, I think. Uh, maybe it's 2364ths, whatever's a 64th more than 3 eighths. So I'm going to go grab that bit out of my drill index and go that size in the floor as well. Just gives you a little teeny bit of wiggle room. 25 64ths, by the way. 
They don't even teach kids fractions in school anymore. Isn't that crazy? side. All right, so with four holes drilled, what we can do is we can set the roll cage back in place. And we can pop in four bolts. You might be tempted to replace these grade five bolts that come in the kit with grade eight. There's no need. Um, the reason they use grade five, I think, and, and I'm no engineer, but uh, I believe it's because grade five has a lesser tensile strength. They're, they're very strong, but they, uh, they do bend a little bit more before they break. Um, and they take into account that these cars aren't perfect and that you're smashing layers of sheet metal in between uh, two eighth inch steel plates. And so by giving you a, a softer bolt, it allows the bolt to be, to, to conform to the fitment a little bit more so than a grade eight would. Um, if you put a, a hardened alloy bolt like a grade eight in these, um, I think there's a decent chance of them snapping uh, before they reach their torque load. Um, just because you're gonna be, you're gonna be tweaking the bolt and that's not ideal. So anyway, with four in, um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go throw nuts and fender washers on the bottom. Uh, the kit comes with doubler plates. They're somewhere around here. I'm not gonna use those until the final install. I'm gonna use fender washers and snug everything up and then mark the rest of my holes and start drilling. Um, depending upon how these back two look, uh, because they go through the torque boxes, so they're considered the uh, most important in terms of strength. Um, I may or may not drill those and put fender washers in before I do the rear. We'll see how it looks once I start snugging things up. All right, so with four bolts uh, and fender washers in place, um, as, as I was sure it would, the floor kind of conformed to the roll bar plate, um, which is what you want. So my path forward, I feel, is to mark and drill, and I think I can do it uh, in place, these uh, rear stringers to the wheel well. Um, actually, I can't do that in place. I'm going to have to uh, take everything back out. But I wanna do that and install those before I put this last most important bolt through the torque box. And the reason being is because the roll cage is gonna deform to the torque box. Um, the torque box is like two pieces of probably, I don't know, it's like more than a quarter inch thick. It's, it's pretty massive. Um, and I don't want the roll bar to conform to the torque box and that to like pull these further out of whack. Um, if I get these drilled and anchored, um, they're going to kind of hold the roll bar in place and just the roll bar foot will contour to the torque box most likely. So you got to kind of try to think about the best way to do this. Um, you don't want the car to be, <laughs> you don't want the car to be uh, deforming too much to fit your roll bar. Um, yeah, anyway, I mean, we're only talking about like sixteenths of an inch here, but I think it's still uh, important to try to be smart about it. Anyway, let me, uh, let me mark these real quick. It's hot inside my garage, and it's hotter inside this car. Right. So these fit, there's a rib where the two halves of the wheel arch come together. You probably can't really see it too well in the video, maybe somewhere in here you can see it. Um, these pads fit just to the inside of that. I'm 
mark. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back with a Sharpie uh, before I move the roll bar back out. Let me get this other side. I have another idea. See, that's how much the floor flexes. It is just sheet metal after all. So this is in exactly the right place. I want to set that bolt in um, and snug it up and I want to pull with a ratchet strap the roll bar down um, slightly because I imagine my floor is tweaked just a little bit right there somebody could have jacked the car up from the floor uh, you know it's, it's tough to say um, but in doing that I'm putting the stress on the floor and not the wheel arch which is stronger Always deburr the undersides of your holes too. Alright, so I figured I'd bring the camera inside and show you guys where I'm at. I feel good about that fitment. That plate's gonna contour to that torque box. This side's about the same. That side fit perfectly. Where I was having trouble was with this side right here. My, uh, my rear stringer was aimed at that rib in the wheel well ever so slightly. If you look here, you can see that this uh, wheelhouse has been replaced. And there's also a bit of rust repair down there. Beautiful work on this car all around. Anyway, what I did is I just took a ratchet strap and I put it to my rear anchor there. And it's not very tight. Just enough to kind of tilt the roll bar back. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill that hole that I can access, throw a bolt in it with a fender washer, and then I can mark all of my other holes. And I'm confident that I've put this thing in with the uh, least amount of stress on the structural components of the car. So hang tight. Let me get that done. So pro tip, if you're having trouble marking a hole, uh, you know, if your floor is dirty or if you're marking through seam sealer or something like that or an, un an uneven surface whatever the case may be you need a really clear mark in dirty material a four flute end mill the appropriate size just take and set it in the hole and spin it by hand um, there and I've got a perfect little circle with the outer edges shiny metal and then when I pull the roll cage back out I can go in with my uh, center punch and punch in the, cir the center of that circle it will be easier to see I'll do that back here too
sure there's some machinists out there watching me cringe. Uh, cringing as they watch me, rather. But you know what? Paint pens drip, Sharpies blur. This is going to be easy to read. All right. So now with all of our holes drilled and the roll bar back in place, we've got our doubler plates. Um, it's fairly easy to determine which one goes where. You just, you know, look at the shape and the uh, orientation of the holes. Um, so this is the passenger side of the wheel well, and this is uh, the front main hoop. So the way this kit's laid out, um, I mean, and that's how all those plates fit. Didn't even have to look. I mean, I kind of got lucky, but still. So, start our nuts on these guys. Um, they're meant to be torqued. Um, it's a 3 8 coarse thread. Coarse thread. Creates coarse thread bolts. Grade five, go to my bolt chart. Grade five, coarse thread, creates 16 plated, 23 foot pounds. So 23 foot pounds. Um, and then rather than using a, a mechanical interference nut, they just give you extra nuts. So it's double nut. You basically uh, torque one and then you hold that one from spinning and you torque the other one up against it um, and that works pretty good to keep a nut from loosening up so let's get them all started snug them down evenly kind of work our way back and forth um, so as not to put stress on any one bolt more than the others and uh, yeah Bob's your uncle so I think that's it for this video. Um, I don't know, as I'm filming this, I've got a lot of footage. So I don't know if this is going to be a two-part or a three-part. You're either watching the end of part one or the end of part two. Um, the next phase of this project is going to be cutting the uh, interior quarter panels to fit around the bar. Um, and then everything has to come back out because, as you can see, I've painted my front floor. Um, I want to basically clean everything up and paint the rear floor as well before I install this bar final final. Um, I don't know how that Shelby package tray is going to fit in here with the roll bar installed and I don't know how I'm going to get it in there before. I heard um, on one forum that the only way to do it is through the rear window opening. I don't want to pull the glass on this. Um, I don't know. This is going to be interesting. So you're going to have to stay tuned to see how I do it. All right, thanks for watching this week, you guys. Uh, please be sure to hit that like button if you like what you saw in today's video. Comment to let me know what you wanna see in future videos. And if you haven't already, please please subscribe to the channel. Sorry, it's hot out here, guys. Uh, anyway, see you next week.